Praise the Lord. Hallelujah today. Today is a great day to be alive because we are in the sun. Hallelujah. I pray to God that you're in the sun today. You're in the, the sun, the Lord Jesus Christ, and that you know him and that you're learning more about him every day and, and walking with him and, and just praising him. And It's not just knowing him in the head. It's knowing him by experience and by all the trials he brings us through each and every day he's such a loving savior such a caring God and a just and righteous king Hallelujah! our Lord Jesus Christ he's righteous and everything he does he does because he loves us and we are his peculiar treasure today saints remember that the enemy assails the believer with doubts but we overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony. Hallelujah. Amen. In Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, it says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always, ought always to pray and not to faint. Not to faint. Not to be feeble. Not to be tired but we ought always to pray and not to faint and why should we always pray because we have a heavenly father who always hears our prayers and always answers our prayers hallelujah he answers our prayers you know when you take delight in the Lord hallelujah the Lord gives you the desire of your heart. He puts the desire in you, in your heart. And then when you pray that prayer, that desire, He answers. Sometimes He takes a day, sometimes a week, sometimes a month, sometimes a year, or two years, or four years. But He answers because it's His desire, because you take delight in Him. And we take delight in the Lord only because the Lord loved us first. Because He first loved us, we're able to love Him back. Hallelujah. 1 John 4. We must remember that it's the Lord who is doing the work. Hallelujah. His grace working in us and through us. Jesus said, He, he, he told a parable saying, okay, He told a parable. He spake a parable unto them. To this end that men ought always to pray not to think this is important right now okay my wife and I been married almost 16 years now and, and the Lord called us to a certain walk and it's a walk of total dependence upon him for all that we have need of spirit soul and body and you know as well as I do in this world you have to have okay the Bible says come out of Babylon but yet Babylon the world system affords many things that the Christian believer uses like gasoline food uh, shelter clothing all these things that the world you know they build houses they have housing industry they have you know the oil industry and, and you know the Christian benefits from these things but you have to have of this world's goods in order to to purchase these things but see when you depend upon God and you sell out to him you surrender to, to the Lord see and you pray he puts a desire in your heart and you pray the Lord brings the answer the Lord brings the answer and our life is a testimony to that end our life our whole life is a testimony to that end Sharon and I we and your life should be a testimony to that end as well because even if you have a job and you're working for someone and they pay you a check every week or every two weeks or once a month you still have to depend on God your whole life has to be a dependence upon the Lord because as soon as you put faith and trust in that man that you're working for something will happen the Lord will show you no you trust me you trust me you trust me depend solely on me See, the Bible says that our guys shall supply all of our need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus and that word need there is is like it it's work the word need is opportunity it's work it's labor it's employment it's 
It means all these different things. God shall supply what we need. Hallelujah. See? Hallelujah. And when you labor in the gospel, okay, you're supposed to be living of the gospel. And that's what we do. We Our whole life is ministry, okay, in one way or another, in many different facets of ministry. It's not just teaching and getting on YouTube and making videos and messages. We've done radio broadcasts. We've done internet radio broadcasts. But God's called us to preach and to, and to feed the sheep. See? And that's what we do. And then He supplies all that we need in order to do it. Hallelujah. But I read this this morning. And He said, Jesus said, There was in a city a judge. Now I, I preach this to you so that you remember. Okay? Just remember that God will hear you and answer your prayers. When you take delight in Him, He puts the desire in your heart. Jehovah does. And he will answer you. I'm trembling right now. There was in a city a judge which feared not God. Now this judge didn't fear God. He was a heathen judge. Neither regarded man. Didn't care about anybody. He was the judge. Okay. He, he said whatever he wanted to say. And there was a widow in that city. A widow. In that city. And she came unto him saying, avenge me of my adversary, avenge me of my adversary. She was coming, avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward, afterward, he said within himself, though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me. See, it was a trouble to him. Because this widow troubleth me. Now, when we're praying to our Father, it doesn't trouble Him. He wants us to cry out. He wants us to pray. He wants us to seek His face. He says, I inhabit the praises of my people. Worship is the highest form of prayer. When you worship God, you are doing exactly what the Father wants you to do. Hallelujah. In every circumstance, in every breath you take, praise Him. Worship Him. Let all your breath, all your speaking, all your doing be a praise and a worship unto our God. Sanctify yourself wholly unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, set me apart that everything that I do will be a praise and a worship unto you. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. This unjust judge, he wouldn't do it for a while. He wouldn't do it. But afterward, he said within himself, he's talking to himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. So this is how the heathen are. Okay, how much more our perfect heavenly Father who created all things. Jesus told the parable in Matthew 6 about the birds and the flowers he said how much more shall my heavenly father take care of you O ye of little faith don't you feel like sometimes you have little faith you go Lord I just don't feel like I can make it another day but he says yes you can I made it every day that I walked up to the cross he, GC Jesus knew where he was going when he went down to Jordan River Jordan River represents the cross he knew where he was headed to people he knew what the father had called him to do and it was to give his life a ransom for many and many of us today in the Christian faith we know what the father has called us to do so we have to stay the course. We're going. We're, nothing can stop us. The devil can try to hinder us. Okay, As in Jesus' case when Peter said, Far be it from thee, Lord. The devil was always trying to hinder Jesus from going to Jerusalem and fulfilling the Father's will. But we have to stay the course. We, once we stay the course and we're, we're, we set our faces like flint, God makes our, our heads you know, harder than, than a diamond. Hallelujah. And we go forward, see, in faith, believing and knowing, hallelujah, praise God. So this, this unjust judge, 
Because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. So God, how much more will he? Listen, Jesus. He says, And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. Look what he says. And shall not God avenge his own elect? which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. Now, that's powerful. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? Maybe you're saying right now, well, I don't cry all day long to the Lord. Well, you need to. But you don't have to do it necessarily with your mouth. But you do have to do it with your heart. See, God's listening for the heart cry of His people. For the heart cry. God answers the heart cry. Hallelujah. Verse 8. I tell you that He will avenge them speedily. See, speedily. Sometimes speedily is like the same day. Sometimes it's a week. Sometimes it's a month. But Father knows when. See, God will avenge you speedily if you cry day and night unto Him. If you've been done a disservice, let's say maybe, maybe you've lost your job, you know, you have a family, and you feel like you, you, you shouldn't have lost your job. Maybe there wasn't anything, you didn't do anything wrong. It's just, the bosses had to choose somebody to get rid of and they chose you. You know that Father was in that. You know the Lord was in that. Because nothing's going to come to you except the Father allow it to teach you something. And I know what the Lord wants to teach you today. What He's teaching us more and more. And He's taught us a lot. And that's depending on Him. We pray every day in this house that God provide what's needed for us to continue to do his will and to, to walk with him and father reassures us and says I am providing for you I am providing for you John and Sharon and we say I know father I know and so we pray for you we pray for the body of Christ and we pray God meet you we pray God touch you every day we pray God protect you put his angels around you our whole life and ministry is about intercession and prayer and, and preaching the truth of the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what he's called us to do. Our life means absolutely nothing. Only when we're in Christ are we in the Father's will. And when you're in Christ, you might not know what to do next. But I guarantee you, the Lord will show you if you cry unto him. Cry unto him. You know, I pray for the spirit of humility in my life, you know, and the Lord grants it, and then he also grants a test to show us, and this morning he reminded me, be slow to speak, slow to wrath. We say, Lord, put a guard on our tongue. Because when you're slow to speak, that means you're, you're, you're going to let the Lord show you what to speak. But if we're quick to speak, a lot of times we say things that hurt us. We say things that hurt others. We say things that are unbecoming of a follower of the way. And we have to repent, and we have to make it right if we've hurt someone. And that's what we do. But Jesus said, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily, those who cry unto him day and night. When you cry day and night, cry out to God day and night for your marriage. Maybe you're recently married and, and your marriage is, you know, when, you're <laughs> when you meet your spouse, whether you're a woman now or a man, and you, you just so giggly and you just love them so much you know and you want to be with them and you want to marry them and they say yes or you know if you're the man you ask your spouse you know before you're married will you marry me 
and she says yes and you're all excited and both of you are excited praise God for that beautiful gift he's given to man marriage and then you get married and then you know the saying the honeymoon's over you know then you begin to learn about each other and you see things that that you don't like in the other one in you and you don't know what to do what you gotta do is cry unto God day and night hallelujah and you say God God is there something in me that's what you do first God is there something in me if you're a man I tell you you say Lord make me a servant make me a servant unto my wife make me a servant unto my children this is what you gotta do because as Christ is with the church that's how the husband's supposed to be to the wife and to the family sacrificing himself because the, the God says in Isaiah 58 he hates he hates the putting forth of the finger and speaking vanity you see but that's what a lot of men do because they're stuck on their self now you examine your heart and see if I'm telling you what's true it's true isn't it you gotta get the focus on God husband you gotta focus on him and you gotta say God make me into that man you want me to be Hallelujah. make me into that man you want me to be the man of God you've called me to be the husband you've called me to be the one who sacrifices for my wife for my family for my neighbors see, for the body of Christ hallelujah hallelujah because the putting forth of the finger and then the, the marriage you start having friction you know and the wife you know you don't know what to do you see that your husband's maybe not doing right or whatever and then you you go to you you say God search my heart you say make me into that godly wife you want me to be the submissive wife to come up beside my husband and to help my husband to encourage my husband but also to speak the truth to my husband and then you pray if you see your husband's not moving you pray you read 1 Peter chapter 3 and you you be that godly woman that Peter describes there the Holy Ghost describes there and you pray for your husband you pray for him I'll tell this story what happened to me when Sharon and I were married two years <clears throat> I, I was not a very good person to Sharon at that time and, and I treated her bad and the Lord told her just go in the room and pray and she did and I was sitting on the couch and our little dog a little Yorkie we had he, he got up on the couch and walked on the back of the couch and just came up behind me right here and he vomited all over my shoulder and the Lord said, that's how I feel about how you're treating my daughter. And boy, I tell you, it smoked my heart. Because that's how some men, you're treating your wives that way. With disrespect. you got to repent for that. Because you want to be right with God. See, if, if the men were right, see, doing what God told them to do, the women would be coming up and being submissive. Yes, they would. See, submission is not underneath you. It's beside you. It's strengthening you. The wife is submissive to her husband. Hallelujah. Okay? And the husband is encouraging his wife. See? And the husband is blessing his wife. Hallelujah. Alright? And the husband listens when his wife speaks. See? Because God speaks to her mouth. Hallelujah. Your brother and sister in the Lord, but your husband and wife, it goes a little deeper. See? So husbands, you gotta listen, and wives, you have to you have to listen to the Lord. You have to listen to your husband. You have to you have to say yes, Lord, yes, Lord. And both of you, all all of us, have to put down put down the self, put down the self, surrender, 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 and cry out daily. See, because there's many needs right now in the body of Christ. People have many needs, spiritual. That's the first one to be fed that true manna from heaven, from Jesus through his vessels that he sends so keep your focus on the Lord cry out to the Lord day and night God says he's going to avenge us speedily church and then Jesus says this this saying and it's so sad nevertheless when the son of man cometh shall he find faith on the earth 
Shall he find faith on the earth? I pray that he finds me, my wife, and you in faith, believing him when he comes. Hallelujah. Trusting him, loving him. Hallelujah. I'll leave you with this. I was before prayer this morning I opened the Bible and the Lord give us uh, Psalm 32 and I'll just leave this video here with this Psalm and the Psalm of David and Maskeel. Maskeel Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven whose sin is covered. See it, it's, it's our sin. We did it can't blame mommy and daddy brother and sister husband or wife or boss it's ours blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven whose sin is covered blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity and in whose spirit there is no guile there is no pretense there's no evil motive. Praise God. Don't you want to be there? I want to be right there in the center of God's will. The motive being glory to you, God. Glory to you. All glory to you. All glory to you, Lord. All glory to you. Only for your glory. If it's not going to bring you glory, cut it off. Cut it out. Get away with it, Lord. I don't want it. Hallelujah. All glory to God. Hallelujah. Verse 3. When I kept silence... My bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. See, when you don't confess, when you don't repent, see, you just seem to waste away, see, and you drift further and further away from the Lord. Hallelujah. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. See, many of you, God's hand is heavy upon you. Hallelujah. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer. Selah. Think about that. Oh, hello. I acknowledged my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. You can't hide from God. Just acknowledge it. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin oh hallelujah see thou forgave us the iniquity of my sin when you confess you have to confess you have to confess all of us do when you sin you know it the Holy Spirit convicts you you know sin is the transgression of the law not preacher condemnation not what men say sin is what God says sin is okay that's what you have to pay attention to. That's what you have to know. God has written His law in your heart when you're born again and filled with the Spirit of God. He's written His law in your heart. And you know when you sin. You know when you're indulging yourself. Repent. Repent. Turn to God. He forgives the iniquity of our sins. Selah. Verse 6. Psalm 32. For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. That's today, y'all. He can be found today. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto thee. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thou art my hiding place. This really touched me this morning in prayer. Thou art my hiding place. God's our hiding place. Glory to God. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt come past me about with songs of deliverance. It says in Zephaniah that he sings over. And, and thou shalt compass us about. Compass me about with songs of deliverance. Say that. Think about that. Songs of deliverance. 
Remember the time you were going through something and, and you were really praying, God, help me, help me, help me, help me, whatever it was. And he waited so long. Wow. We've been there many times. <laughs> he waits a long time. It's like, God, 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 day in and day out. And then he delivers you. And it's like, in a minute, you're delivered. Within a minute. Within one minute, it's that simple for God. And you go, how did you do that? <laughs> how did you do that, God? You know? Because our thoughts, we're thinking God has to do this, 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 this. You don't have to do that. God confirms. He confirms things. My wife was praying, and she prayed, God, send forth your forces. And she prayed, Father, send Michael here. Fight, fight the battle for us, oh God. You know? She was praying, and she was, I mean, she was crying out, you know. And I was just reading the word and sharing, just praying and crying out. And I, not even five minutes after, now this is summertime, this guy walks by the house, and he's carrying a chainsaw in his hand. Now Sharon was praying God would cut the enemy off, okay? cut off this demonic force, whatever it is, Lord, that attacks your church, that attacks your people, okay, cut it off. And not even five minutes, this guy walks by carrying a chainsaw. And nobody ever walks by this place carrying a chainsaw on the street. And God was showing us, I've sent him. I've sent you the reinforcement you prayed for. And he sent them to you too. See, we're just part of the body of Christ. We're not exclusive. We're not on an island. <laughs> Praise God by no means. And all of us have our little niche, our little part of the, of the ministry of Christ. So God's fighting the battle for all of us. Hallelujah. We all have ministering angels of flaming fire around us to protect us and keep us and lead us into that way God wants us to go. Hallelujah. Creating the circumstances in our life to bring us to the place that God wants us to be. Hallelujah. Transforming us into the image of the Son. Hallelujah. Verse 8, Psalm 32. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Aren't you glad God's doing that? He's instructing us. He's teaching us, church, in the way that we should go. He's guiding us, guiding us with his eye. Praise God. And then he says to us now, listen, Be not as the horse or as the mule which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Don't be like that, God said. Don't be like that. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. Mercy shall compass us about. He that trusteth in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. Are you upright in heart? You're upright in heart when you're in Christ got to put down the flesh man, the soul man, the, the man that wants to rule it all. And you got to let Father have it all. All of us do. Let us pray. Father God, oh, praise you, Father. Oh, praise you, Father. Oh, Father, Father, Father. We pray right now, Father, we come before you humbly, Lord, knowing that you know all things you see all things you know our hearts you know our thoughts every thought Lord every thought you know Lord you know where we miss it Lord in our understanding where we're missing it please give us your understanding grant us grant us your understanding today Lord lead us in the way everlasting O oh God as a people Keep us focused on you, Lord. Loving you, praising you, glorifying you. No matter what you allow to come into our life, oh God, that we would praise you and worship you in it. And continue to provide, Lord, for your children today. And for the work you've called your children to do, Lord, provide, Lord, today. Hallelujah. All things according to your will and purpose, Lord. According to your righteousness. According to your way, oh God. Hallelujah. Bless each saint today, Lord, that would hear this whenever they hear this message. Bless them and keep them. Make your face to shine upon them. Lord. Lift up your holy countenance on them, upon them, 
and grant him peace. And now I put the name of the Lord upon you, saint. I put the name, the character, the authority of God upon your life. In Jesus' name, amen.